When we look at the rhetoric from politicians, there is consensus uh, to do something towards uh, the big tech companies when it comes to regulation. Do, do you think it's likely to materialize in the next couple of years? Well, I think there are a lot of cross currents. Some is just let's break up the tech companies. I'm not sure that's a very good idea. But I do think focusing on data is important. Uh, it becomes a competitive weapon and it's at the core of the privacy issues. So giving a more of a property right to data to individuals is the key. Do you think that politicians have the expertise and resolve to get this done before the 2020 election or not? They surely don't. I mean, we've seen from the hearings that uh, many political leaders aren't that knowledgeable, but it's the time to do some good work on figuring out how to get at both the privacy issues and the legitimate antitrust issues. It's highly technical, so voters may not be so focused on it, but I think the idea of tech companies as a problem, voters are focused on. Roger, I ask this question a lot. I'm going to ask it of you again today. Is the genie out of the bottle in terms of consumers' data? I mean, I think about my daughter. No pictures, no anything of her on Facebook or other social media sites. But if you put her name in, there's lots of information about her to be found on the Internet. Morgan, that is precisely the current problem, but not the future problem. So when people say to me, Roger, my data is already out there, I can't get it back, that is demonstrably true. And they say, hey, I've done nothing wrong, I have nothing to worry about. That is also demonstrably true, but that is not the risk we face now. The risk we face now is that these companies are building these really detailed portraits of each and every one of us, including the people who are not on their systems, and they're using it to affect the behavior of whole populations. Why? Because in doing so, they can cause more revenue and earnings for themselves. And if you look at what's going on now with smart devices, Alexa-powered and Google Home-powered devices, they're putting that surveillance in new places, the kitchen, the living room, the bedroom, right? They're listening all the time. They're creating new applications based on that that are designed to anticipate your desires, market to your desires. And I, all I can tell you is we have a different problem. We don't yet have a good vocabulary for it. And so all I would say to people is don't look backwards, look forwards. Beware well, of IoT well, and beware Glenn, of AI. Glenn, about that, uh, does a property right to data really solve the problem? I mean, it, in one way, my data, my individual data is of limited value. But knowing how my data connects to my family's data and people I went to college with and people who are demographically similar, that's where the big money is. And I have no influence over that. It's the platforms who are able to put those social graphs together. That's true. But what you do solve with the property right is the competitive problem. Currently, the platforms have a lot of market power because it's hard to compete when they own the data. I mean, you own the data gives you more of a right. So it does help with the competitive problem and a little bit the privacy problem. But Glenn, what is your advice then to regulators that would, would sort this out in terms of what is a, a readily available piece of action uh, that would take a big step towards solving the issues that are there? Well, I think it's first try to understand these issues better. And second, there are a number of economists and technologists working on how you would price data this will take some time, but I think it's definitely doable. Glenn, thank you very much for joining us. Roger, sure. quick final question. Do you think some politicians fear rebuke from these platforms and these media giants in the same way that traditionally you would argue 20, 30 years ago, the newspaper barons are very yeah. powerful? No, I think they do. And I think what we've hit a, a tipping point, though, where especially in the San Francisco Bay Area, where a lot of the constituents live, there are a lot of very brave members of Congress who are asking the right questions. And the point is, this does not have to be confrontational. This could be something we do cooperatively, that just Google and Facebook are not yet choosing to be cooperative.